Something coming faster than any of us can imagine and will change our lives in the most dramatic ways is AI. And while AI used to sound freaky to me and just something that was gonna take over my world, it really would have revolutionized my practice had I stuck around. Many of you know, I got so burnt out from charting was the big reason I left medicine because it was frustrated with the EMRs, the clunkiness, and the amount of time it took to learn them. Not only that, but not being able to sit and connect with a patient and look them in the eye, like one-on-one -on -one while you're actually interacting with them. The whole reason we went into medicine, not to do paperwork. Yeah, so that's why May and I have started working with Lindy.ai, which is fascinating. They help you produce the most efficient notes, fully customizable, which is different than some other AI products. So you can do what you do best, which is see patients and let the artificial intelligence scribe do the dirty work for you. Yeah, not only do you get the perfect patient notes the way you want, written in any format, for whatever specialty you're in, and maybe you're in ophthalmology or vet medicine, it will also create the note, scribe and send the patient follow-up instructions, referral letters, consultation notes. It's amazing. Lindy is offering our listeners a seven-day trial to experience the difference of their AI medical scribe. Go sign up at lindy.ai slash BS free to get started. That is lindy, L-I-N-D-Y dot A-I slash BS free. Finally, a source of raw, real, and honest information on healthcare issues that matter most. Welcome to BS free MD latest medical information to how to stay sane as a doctor or a patient. No subject is taboo. No BS is allowed. Now, let's welcome your hosts, Drs. May and Tim Heinmarsh. Okay, you can hear the volleys of anti-aircraft fire, which means it must be another truth bomb. Incoming. Happy right. Wednesday. Yeah, so May and I have just kind of decided that we're going to play tennis with the uh, with the truth bombs and sort of we each kind of take one and man manhandle or woman handle it as it mm -hmm. as it would be uh, alternating weeks uh, not playing actual tennis because that would be a disaster and then I would be really angry because I hate it so I'm trying not to interrupt your chance to serve this over whack <laughs> so it's a crushing forehand as he plays at the Old England club. And he's wearing white, of course, because you cannot wear any other con color at Wimbledon. Just like white to see you only. in all white. White only. Do they put Iron Maiden t shirts on white? Harley, no, but Iron Maiden. Harley is Davidson t shirts on white. Made in England. They actually had a tour called Made in England. And so, wow, well, we're going to, we're going to do what we are doing now. What all the podcast hosts hosts do that we hate that they do, which is they talk about crap before they get to the content that people care about. They sure do. So let's not do that anymore. Um, I'm going to talk about comfort, or as the case may be, discomfort <laughs> or pain, <laughs> oh, which is even better. Why did you pick this topic? Because I think it's critically important to success. Critically important to success like to all kinds of success. And and we live in a society that has been so unbelievably comfortable for so long. Like you wouldn't have had to have had this discussion 140 years ago, like the mid 1800s or 1900. It wouldn't have mattered because life was just super uncomfortable and that's the way it was. So doing whatever you could to, you know, get away from that to a certain degree really, you know, spurned all these advancements of the industrial revolution from the mid 1800s on. And then you become so comfortable that you get, you know, lazy and complacent and all these other bad things happen. Um, so what are we going to do about it? Do you want well, me to help you not be comfortable? No, no, you've been an expert at that. Uh, 
I don't know. So, so that NASCAR. No, seems I know. To keep you pretty comfy. It does. But you know, it harkens back to the to the quote of Jesus, which is, "In this life, you will have trouble." And I think if you you know the assumption that people have, or the assumptions that we have, really guide our thinking. And you have to to change how you we think and approach problems. Really comes back to going back and and, and altering the assumption. So what's the assumption? Because a lot of people have this assumption of, of I should be comfortable. When in reality, if you look at the history of humanity, it's no, you should be uncomfortable, like in every way. Like you should be hungry, you should have disease, you should be sleeping in a cave. I mean, that's humanity. That's most of humanity. And that's still a large portion of people of the 8 billion people that live in the world. Mm -hmm. Now their life is just discomfort. So this idea of accepting, you know, expecting comfort is ridiculous. Okay. You know, when you have it, it's a blessing and it harkens back to probably one of the most painful experiences I've had. At least it's absolutely the most painful experience in, in sports that I've ever had, which was, I went ice climbing with a friend of mine and it was really cold. It was probably 25 below zero. Um, and, I had the wrong boots on and I was gripping the ice axes really hard and my toes got kind of pinched and then they're like in base, like almost in the ice and I didn't get frostbite, but I get, I got really, really close to having frostbite on virtually all of my toes. And I remember walking that off and it was just like agonizing and how horrible it was. And then I talked to my friend who was guiding me and had done tons of climbing he said, you know what I love about this is it makes me comfortable being uncomfortable. And I really appreciate comfort now. And I was like, ah, there's some truth there. So there's pain and pain is absolutely inevitable. But there's, I absolutely believe this, there's good pain and there's bad pain. There's the pain that, you know, you go to touch something and it's hot and you move your hand before you burnt. That's, that's good pain. There's the pain of exercise versus the pain of being, you know, morbidly obese or out of shape or insulin resistant or a type two diabetic or having a heart attack or any of these things. And so the fact is the blessing that we have in first world countries is we largely get to pick our pain. And it really is the secret sauce to the least amount of suffering in your life. I've heard many different definitions of suffering. I think the most adequate definition is it's not just physical pain, but it's physical pain combined with the emotional and spiritual angst that goes along with it. Or it's the, you know, these really dark periods people have emotionally that go on and on. That's suffering. And I think that people that pick their pain end up with the least amount of suffering. Because you're, you're, you really, every decision we make, you're either deciding to, have a less long life's span to have more difficulty doing activities as you age or not. I mean, may has just gone through Peter Atia's outlive book and we're, tr we're all, I've said this a gazillion times in sp speaking I've done, we're all training for something. And so I love this idea of picking your pain and, you know, people talk about, well, I got to get out of my comfort zone. Well, do you know what that means? If you're out of your comfort zone, you're uncomfortable. And I think a lot of people just move from one comfort zone to a different comfort zone. They move from the couch to the Barco lounger. No, you're not out of your comfort zone unless you're uncomfortable. And it's super powerful. And this isn't just, you know, physically, physical training even emotional and relational stuff. Like we, you know, we've had some really great discussions with some of our friends lately and it's, you know, sometimes you got to have hard conversations with people. People are doing self-destructive things and it's uncomfortable to mention that, but you can do that in a kind, loving way, which is really what caring is about. There's discomfort in caring for people. What I've come up with as the bottom line for this is if pain is inevitable, picking your pain really is mandatory. And I think very few people work through that, that it's like, it's just too easy to be comfortable. And, and so I'm challenging myself now 
because man, I are, are going through some uncomfortable stuff because we're moving again. It sucks. We have faith that the things we give up will ultimately gain us, you know, I don't things, which is a dumb word, but will gain us more yeah. sa- job satisfaction, more in the terms you know, of, you know, when people like to stay comfortable, they don't grow and not all pain is beneficial. And there's a lot of pain that people live with and have physical ailments or in situations where they're being abused or emotional um, abuse. That's negative pain. But what I hear you saying, and I agree is that to grow and to have positive growth and to have um, better career or uh, personal uh, growth or physical um, improvements, anything like that requires you stepping out of your comfort zone and it's going to be painful, uncomfortable, scary. And so you have to choose, are you going to just sit there and not grow and not develop and not become a better version of you or a better version of you or more successful or a better partner or better for your kids, your spouse, et cetera? Or are you just going to sit there kind of with like the comfortable little blanket and binky in your mouth and, and not budge? So it's going to hurt. It's going to not feel great. And sometimes you have to like hurt a little bit to grow. Well, right. And, you know, there's some extreme examples. I think the most extreme example is probably the toughest man in the world who's who is David Goggins. And he he wrote a great book called uh, Can't Hurt Me. And he wanted he was working as an exterminator at all night and he was almost 300 pounds. He was 297 pounds. And he's like, this sucks. Like my life sucks. He was in the Air Force for a while and then he got out of that and he went home and he watched TV and there was these guys going through uh, basic underwater demolition training or buds to become Navy SEALs. And he goes, that's what I want to do. And he lost 106 pounds in three months. Wow. He quit his job and he said, that's all I'm going to focus on. And But the thing that's really interesting is his resilience is so amazing because he failed buds twice from injury. So they let him come back. He's the only person to go through Navy SEAL training three times in history. And then I believe he's the only guy in the world to have become a Navy SEAL and an Army Ranger. Mm-hmm. And then he got into these ultra marathons. And and the one is, uh, I forget what it is. Uh, I, th- I think it's the Western States 100, where it starts in Death Valley. And you run through Death Valley, and it's like 125 degrees. And then it ends on the top of this mountain that's like four or 5,000 feet and like freezing, basically. Yeah, I'm thinking that's there's not enough gain in that for me to have pain. No, so... So when you like, you know, you hear these stories and I mean, I don't think they're examples of how people should live, but I think seeing examples of what's actually possible is motivating to go, okay, well, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? That's different. And understanding that all change to a certain degree is uncomfortable. It's, it's like, okay, well, what's possible? Is it possible to lose another 15 pounds or is it possible to gain another, however much of muscle? Is it possible to, you know, read more i mean pick whatever you you want to pick and the answer is yes because if somebody can go from 297 pounds and like lose 106 and become a navy seal and then and then an army ranger we can probably put up with a little bit more discomfort and you know put down some of our go-tos for just being comfortable yeah and and i i it really struck me because every single person that's successful was willing to count the cost and take the leap of faith and go, yeah, I know it's going to be painful, but I'm going to do it anyways. And some of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life were, I know this is going to suck, but it's going to be worth it. So take that to heart, get comfortable with getting a little uncomfortable. It won't kill you. Embrace small, embrace the suck. Yeah. Embrace the suck and feel that pain as weakness leave in your body, as you grow in a positive direction. All right. Till next week. Bombs away. It's no secret that medicine is a bit um, uptight. 
That's why Tim and I created BS Free MD to mix things up a little and have fun in the process. Besides, we are having these exact same discussions all the time, so we thought we might as well invite everyone to the party. If you really like us, you can get plenty more and maybe see one of Tim's cool tattoos on our Instagram or Facebook pages at BS Free MD. See you next time. Well, we try to keep BS Free MD as raw and real as possible. We can't be held responsible for any medical decisions or discussions had as a result of what you've heard on the show. We know, bummer. But the truth is, we really do care about your questions. So feel free to reach out to us by email at doc at bsfreemd.com.